good to see you guys. I uh, think we don't do this enough anymore. Have open conversations without the censors or the filters in between us. The censorship culture in this country, it's, it's become something else. And I'll say, I mean, even the censorship culture that we saw on the internet, then bleeding into what banks can lend to or not, now bleeding into the way the, our elections are conducted. And look what happened yesterday. Saying, you know, Trump can't be on the ballot in Colorado. Make no mistake, I'm running to be the nominee and I want to defeat everybody else through the front door by convincing the voters of this country, not by having the competition eliminated. And so I said yesterday, you know what, if they're not going to run a free and fair election in Colorado, I'll remove myself from the GOP primary ballot too and call on every other Republican to do the same thing. We cannot stand for this assault on our republic. All those judges were Democrats. Of course they are. I mean, this is, and, and you know, I mean, you don't even get me started. I could go on the whole hour about how this is an unconstitutional assault. We just live in a moment where we're not working with a lot of time here. I'm a father of two sons. My wife, Apoorva, she's a throat surgeon at Ohio State, saving lives at the cancer hospital when she's not here on the weekends with us. Raising our two boys, and one of them is traveling with me across the state these few days. If they're in high school before we get this right, I don't think we have a country left. I think we're in the middle of a war in this country right now. I don't use that word lightly. It's not a war between black and white, as the media would teach you to believe. It's not even a war between Democrat and Republican, really. It's deeper than that. It is a war between those of us who love the United States of America and our founding ideals. Those of us who believe that all men are created equal. Who believe that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character. Those of us who believe in free speech and open debate, in actually free and fair elections, who believe that these ideals form the backbone of the greatest nation known to man. That's one side of this war. And on the other side, you have this fringe minority in this country who believes that your identity is based on your race, your gender, your sexuality, who believe that, you know what? We should stop burning carbon emissions in this country, even as we shift those same carbon emissions to places like China, flog ourselves, and apologize for our modern way of life. That our nation wasn't founded in 1776, it was in 1619. That maybe we can use our military to protect somebody else's border halfway around the world. But if we use it to protect our own border, somehow that's racist or xenophobic or bigoted. Oh, and by the way, if you disagree with any of what I've just said, that automatically means you're a homophobe or a transphobe or a racist or a climate denier. At a point in our history where there's no greater damnation than to be called one of these things. That's the other side of this war. And I call it a war because there's no middle ground here. Right? The tax rates we could debate, okay? I prefer low, some people prefer high, those are details. But here there's no room for compromise. Either you believe in merit or you believe in group quotas. You can't have both. Either you believe in free speech or you believe in censorship. You cannot have both. Either you believe in American exceptionalism or you believe in apologizing for who we are. You cannot have both. And I think right now more than ever, we need a commander-in-chief who will lead us to victory in this war. That's gonna require somebody who understands the hour is late. We're not working with a lot of time. You can't win a war unless you know that you're in one. I think it requires somebody who isn't captured by the corrupt, broken politics and special interests that have gotten us to where we are. I'm a businessman. I have founded multi-billion dollar companies. My parents came to this country with no money in search of opportunity. In a single generation, I have founded multiple successful businesses. I'm new to this sport, and I can tell you it is far worse than you imagine. <laughs> in terms of, this guy, I knew it was gonna be dirty. It's far dirtier than you'd expect. Every politician dances to the tune of their biggest donor. It's just a fact. And in my case, that biggest donor 
is me. I'm not dancing to somebody else's tune. I'm not going to be somebody else's pawn or circus monkey. That's what it's going to take to revive this country and win this war. But more than ever, now I think it is going to take a commander-in-chief with fresh legs from the next generation to reach and lead the new generation of Americans. 